Okay, so I have the rectangle. I'll go to my trim command. Cutting objects will be the rectangle. I right click, area to trim. That's what I want it to remove. Enter and I'm done. The other thing I did with this, I began to, uh, well, I just rotated it to kind of align it with how I thought it might make sense for it to sit on the side. I was thinking of this, again, the, the idea with this initial massing is that some of those ideas are going to transform, they're going to mature. So the project is not going to look like that. Even the way some of these spaces are situated on the site might change, right? That's a bit of a guide, but I'm, allowing, I'm being open to allow the overall uh, form and the overall um, spatial, spatial suggestion here and organizational principles to evolve. But I'm using that as a bit of a guide. So kind of with that, if I look at the top view, this is what I started to interpret as kind of a larger area that might be um, analogous to the main gallery space and really sorted out how circulation might work, although I'm looking at these, what are actually mullions, but as a plan, they could start to unfold as a, a circulatory system. And I still have to work through um, uh, service components. And actually in this massing model, I didn't include um, anything for the tower. So I have to think about something for the observation tower itself. So you can start to see different heights that were associated um, with that. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this and move it to the side since that's something that this, where this will be headed. Let me go ahead and rotate it. This is the rotate tool here. And I want to make sure, I want to, I want to, in this case, do a 2D rotate. So it's just going to rotate it uh, uh, about the, or relative to the orthographic view that I'm in. And I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees for now. I'm going to bring back my site plan so I can start thinking about scale a little bit. You can see just looking at this versus that, this looks a little bit um, big. So I'm going to go ahead and scale it. And I'm just going to do a 2D scale. And I'm, I'm not being entirely exact. I'm, I'm trying to be close with this, but I'm not necessarily worried about this being absolutely accurate. This you know, is meant to be an exploration, a concept model to help foster ideas. So I'm being loose enough with it where I'm, I'm pretty close. You know, I can use this as kind of a gauge in terms of scale. Um, but uh, uh, at the same time, I kind of want to be able to let this be a fluid process. So that looks somewhat close, um, something that I can begin to work with. I'll bring back, well, it should be locked, okay. And now, you know, looking at this, perhaps there's part of this that I want to align to the, the, some of the property lines here. Right now it's not really aligned with it at all. So as a preliminary idea on how I might begin to work with it, I'm just going to rotate so that this line is more or less parallel to that property line. So again, I'll use the 2D rotate. There's a center point, so about which, how it's going to rotate. I'm gonna hold my shift key down because I have my ortho on so I can have a, more variables in terms of angles and try to align it with that. And thinking about, you know, again, this early massing, I kind of had that uh, gallery space hugging the corner to a certain degree. Not entirely, but it was basically hitting that corner. Circulation was coming through and then service was there. So I'll take it and move it over a little bit. Then I'm starting to imagine this area um, unfolding not only as some of the other components that I'll need, but also as part of the site design. So I'm thinking about those as fields of space within the property lines um, that could emerge as um, the sculpture garden. Okay, I'm going to turn off the topo. And I'm just going to start cutting this up a little bit so I can start to basically create the cuts and start to create some folds. 
So I'm just going to create a curve here. And I'm going to first work with this section right here. So each of these spaces I'm kind of thinking as a different kind of region, potentially. Um, that could be spatial. And so I'm basically going to trace that area. And if you want to make an enclosed shape here, I can just type C enter or at the top, I can just click close, you know, close that overall as a, a curve, as a polygon. Then I'll go to my split tool. I don't want to trim it because I still want to use uh, um, that area, right? So I don't want to remove it. I just want to split it and basically cut it away from the rest of the image the rest of the surface. So I'll enter split, objects to split, want to split that overall surface, right click or enter, cutting objects is that line I just drew, enter, and now I have that as a separate piece. I'm seeing this here as well, this extra corner, it's because it's part of the corner of the, you know, the frame of the image, and so I don't know, maybe to, to play with that, maybe something unique happens there. I'm going to create another curve from corner to corner so I can kind of complete this shape and perhaps do something different with that piece. So I'm going to go ahead and split that. Object to split, right click, the cutting object, right click. So now I have the triangle and that um, four-sided polygon. So we're still flat. Now the thing that's really nice that Rhino lets you do, and it starts to be a pretty powerful tool, is something called 3D Rotate. So if I go back to my Rotate tool, there's 2D and 3D. So I can right click to get into the 3D Rotate command. The start of the axis, so I want to fold about this line right here. So this will be my axis. I'll connect one point to the other point. This is where the object snaps really come in handy. Um, the first reference angle is going to be the end of this, so I'll just uh, select that corner. And again, I have ortho on right now, but if I then hold my shift key, I mean, now I'm going to disable my or uh, object snap. Now I can just ro rotate it however I'd like about that axis. I can still kind of navigate around to get the right angle so I know what I'm doing. I could also jump to another view. So say that makes sense. Of course it's the opposite side of what I wanted, so control Z that. Go through the command again. See there. I also want to do something with this piece. And now that I'm looking at it, and if I start thinking about some, this is something that's defining that major space, I know I have a condition where I, I have to uh, maintain 20 foot ceiling height, right? Um, so what I'm actually going to do is create another split. So I have this piece, this piece, and because it's touching the ground right there, and again, this is really more so about. Uh, exploration in addition to informing the project I'm going to create another split right along there okay so I'll go through the split command again object to split enter cutting object is that line So I have these different areas and I can then do a 3D rotate command and bring that edge up a little bit. So I'll right click, I want to rotate about that axis. This is the rotation point. You know, disable my object snap and bring that edge up. 
the same time I'm going to perhaps bring this edge, maybe I'll bring this one down. Even the way I'm deciding, you know, to do what I'm doing right here, um, you know, I'm thinking about the program, I'm thinking about the site, but I'm also letting it just be fluid, you know, letting it be a bit of a sculptural process. I'm kind of improvising to a certain degree, although I have some guidelines. So I can start to emerge as something, you know, I still have now this edge um, down here that's touching the ground. I could probably work around that perhaps, um, or I could just take all of this, this whole overall assembly and just move it up to give myself a little bit more headroom where it comes down to the ground. Let me go to the right view. And I can go into move. And I can type in whatever distance I feel is appropriate. I just typed in nine feet, enter. And I'll go ahead and move that up nine feet. So generally now I know I have a big area that have some pretty uh, tall ceilings. Um, you know, that's something I can continue to work with and modify in terms of its proportions. Um, but, you know, that's starting to be something of interest, right? And hopefully you can start to see that, you know, the steps involved are still, again, informed by what was going on here with, uh, with the massing. Uh, okay. So that's basically the process that I went through to create this. Let me just zoom in on it. I was just about to, this is a little residual piece that was there. I was starting to think about the tower element. And so I did some uh, 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 splitting and a little bit of rotating here. Then I actually took this piece and copied it up. I was gonna change the scale of it um, and then perhaps just connect those uh, um, to create um, a surface. So, I mean, one way I can do that too is just, I can just start making these connections. I'm just using the free surface here. I know I have at least four points. And it starts to give me an idea of um, volume. And, you know, I didn't end up changing the scale here, but of course, once you did change the scale, we would see variation as you go up. We don't need all that space for the observation tower, especially just to circulate up there. So something may happen in between, but you can start to see how ideas of mass and form can start to um, unfold here. Um, I also started trimming this back area. So just creating an overall field. I knew I had the condition um, that what 75% of the sculpture garden had to be at least at a <coughs> negative 10 foot elevation. So I took a big area, split it from the rest of it, basically this area, and just pushed it down that distance. So I just moved it similar to how I moved this other, other piece. And then started to think about the layers that were actually in the image. If we if I look at the top of this, the actual initial field here was that section. Um, that's actually aligned with the inside of what is actually the mullion piece. But I'm starting to think about now layers of space. Um, so I took that to be one layer. Um, there's the kind of inside surface of the mullion that I took to be another spatial layer. There's this thin layer, which is kind of the glass plus the outside edge of the mullion. That's there. Um, and then this overall framing piece, that's still actually set at the um, at zero plane. And I just started moving those pieces around, thinking about different progressions down to that elevation, um, other ideas and relationships, this being sort of a softer edge here. It's kind of directed in it. There's direction here, if I look at it and plan, that starts to say that maybe there's gathering or something that happens along these edges, along steps or what have you. Maybe the major sculpture garden is there. But also the views would be directed more so towards the street. Um, again, thinking about some of the criteria from the program saying that those southern um, views needed to be obstructed. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, um, let's see. So I'm going to go back to this model and I'm just going to quickly, I'm actually going to, you know, just hide this. Just turn that off. Just use the light bulb tool there to turn it off. I can always right click and bring it back. So I just want to create uh, now a mask because I want to show you guys um, the section tools. The section tools now is a uh, one of the plugins for Rhino that I asked everyone to download. So that's the link there is on the um, resource sheet um, on BB Learn. You can find all the links there. You'll find the link to the section tools so you can download the installation and uh, um, install it and have it available. But I'm just going to enclose this quickly. Um, just so I have a poly surface. And I guess for this I'll make it triangular. is okay so now I have this overall form so if I start to think about the massing of it hopefully again you can see how this is an idea that immediately transforms and becomes something unexpected um, going through this process and that's you know, part of the that's the major part of the uh, goal for this exercise so I'm going to select this all of the surfaces and I'm going to join them So when I did that, it actually removed part of the image that was originally there. That's okay, you know, realize that that's going to happen. If you still want to reference some of uh, the information on the imagery or from your photo montage, you can just copy that to the side before you um, join it so you still have that information. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, let's see, I think I'm going to Well, I'm going to show you how to use the tool first. Okay, so I'm going to get into a top view. Here we are. So I'll go into section tools. And basically what I want to do is create a 2D layout. Oh, wait. First I have to create an array. So create an array. So basically what this is going to do, the section tool, It'll take a surface or a poly surface or whatever it is, um, make cuts through that surface or the poly surface, and then give you all of the profiled outlines um, from that. At the same time, what it'll do, or actually the, the additional step in terms of creating the layout, it'll then, it, it creates uh, separate layers, first of all, for those section cuts. So you'll have that, but at the same time, you can create a 2D layout. So it'll automate the process of taking all of those cuts and laying them down flat so then you can nest them or gather them however you'd like on a sheet and scale them and cut that on a laser cutter or you know it's basically used for fabrication so it could be full scale uh, uh, water jet or something for some components so I'll go into create array um, I'm going to section that object so I'll select it you see right away it comes up with a series of uh, lines here. Um, so there are some presets. So let me expand this. So in this command right now, I can change the direction of it. So right now it's on the X axis. I can change that now if I click here to the Y. Or I can select something else. You see here I can pick. So if I wanted it to be at some angle you can do that and you can might have something else in terms of reference for there 
And basically with this, I'm trying to find some suggestion for structure. That's why I'm making these cuts uh, uh, through this volume. Um, let's see, the number of sections. The number of sections may be fine as long as it covers the overall area. Um, the spacing right now, it's set to five feet or 60 inches. I can make that larger or smaller, uh, of course. So let's just say 96. So that's reflected, that change is reflected uh, in the array here. And for the sake of this, I'm just gonna select this furthest corner, just so I know, at least at the starting point, I'm gonna have full, uh, full bays of this. So I'll click that. Now what it's doing, it's processing, and it's making all of those cuts. And it's creating all the layers, you know, the layers that were here. So now if I go to the perspective view, You can see it made all those cuts, even though you know this surface was twisted a little bit, so it took that into account, of course. So now we see all of those cuts. I typically, uh, they're on separate layers, to group these right away, just to make sure I can bring them along together. Okay, so now what I can do is go into the top view, section tool. I forget if I want nest or 2D layout. Let me try this one. Click on list. And I want to select all of these sections. These are all of these layers basically. <coughs> So it took all of those sections that were cut, it labeled them in order, section one, two, and three, and so forth, um, and laid them out two-dimensionally. Now they're flat on the construction plane, and this is information that I could start to use to make other cuts. You notice that it's a single line right here, right? And so if I wanted it to be a double line, I would have to give this some thickness. One way to do that, I'll try and see if it'll work with this geometry, uh, would be to offset surface. I go to offset surface and you see all these arrows, that's direct, the direction it's going to um, offset. So I can actually flip all those if I want and change the distance. Right now it's set to four. I'll put it at 12 inches if this is meant to be structure. And I'll go ahead and select flip all. So now they're going in. And it might disjoint some of these surfaces. This might not be perfect. Let's see what happens. So we'll see it's there. Now there's two layers and they're one foot apart. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to, into top view, I'm just going to delete the previous sections there. Are you recording this? I am. I know the 3D rotates a little more straightforward. These are some other, but yeah, I'm recording it. Okay, so now instead of, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these layers. Right now, I, when I'm doing, using the section tool, is I'm uh, uh, using it to understand some ideas about structure, right? One of the things in, in addition to materiality and textures, we have to think about structure as one of those components. And so this is a way to kind of automate and think about structure, again, uh, then using some of the other tools that we have used before um, being the laser cutting primarily. I could take this into this form into uh, one, two, three D make and do slices that way as well. 
I could do basically this section tools is an automated um, plugin, but it, it's basically automating a curve from objects command, which is there's a section tool here. That's where you draw individual lines, and then you would have to rotate everything down to make sure everything's down to con on the construction plane. This little plugin does that for you. So yeah, I'm trying to find a structural system, some expression for structure with this. So again, I can go into create array, the objects, go to my top uh, view. And for sake of this, I'm just gonna keep this straight, but um, there are the other variables to think about. Just generating all those sections. So it made all those cuts. Crazy one there. See, some unexpected things happen when you're going through this process, which is also part of the point. Uh, then I'm going to go into um, 2D layout. And you have to click on list here. And then in this dialog box, select all. I'll say OK. This is mapping these out individually. I don't want to do that, actually. I'll go back into section tools, and it's the nested layout list. Select all. OK. So now we have some thickness. That, that could be columns and beams and so forth. We can start to interpret that um, as structure, even this crazy one. So those would be elements that I could then cut out in the laser cutter, erect them in space, also have other surfaces to adhere to them to kind of keep it together, and start letting it be part of the expression. The other tool that's um, pretty handy is a tool called Unroll Developable Surface. And this is, um, this is a tool that has difficulty working with double curved surfaces. So I could try it with this here, but I already know that this surface, where we had some of those crazy cuts, it's twisted, it has, it's, it's double curved, right? And so what Unroll Developable Surface will do, it's if you imagine you have a box, that you created. It's basically going to unfold that box flat so then you can cut that box out and then fold it and make it um, physically. So if I went to this for example and I went to um, surface unroll developable surface I've already selected that so it took all those surfaces and laid them out here. So those are all the panels that were part of that surface, that poly surface. The other thing with that, I'm going to delete that. If I, get, if I go through that again, if I say I do not want it to explode, the, the, the default here is for it to be exploded. That means you just have the separate pieces. Um, but if I do not want it to explode, it'll actually make cuts and unfold and still have some of the pieces linked. So I'll select that to know, hit enter. So now we see this here. Now this is something I could actually just cut out on the laser cutter, even have it score some of these edges here and fold and make that mass. And it comes in handy, especially when you're creating fairly uh, uh, complex geometries. And so some of these that I was creating here are starting to be pretty complex. Um, so it's a way that I could um, kind of flow through working with the digital and fairly fluidly output into the um, physical and start working with it manually. I'm just going to see what it does with this with this surface. I have a feeling it'll fail. It didn't. It made it. So even with something like that, I would, you know, again, it's a model. It's meant to, to explore. You know, basically, it, you have to remember that some of these are going to have to be 
curved, right, or twisted as you're building the model. Um, apparently it was able to do it on its own here. If they're too complex, it'll basically fail, say it, it could not unroll it because of double cur curved surfaces. Yes? So does that apply to when you, like, if it's not a solid, so there's a fake missing, but they're all still joined, like, say you have five rows and six faces, Yep, yeah, it did it. This one actually is only, it doesn't have a bottom. This one that I just created. Is that why it's missing the little bottom slices? Yep. Because okay. I didn't I didn't fill that in. So if I went back and actually lofted that surface and made it all whole, then I would have whole cuts. Or I could just say, okay, I'm gonna spend ten minutes and draw the lines to connect all those bottoms so they're pure cuts in the those sections. Yeah, so it wouldn't be that bad just to connect these lines and even like trim them because they're a little bit off because I just offset the surface. So when you do that, sometimes it'll throw it off that way if there's a lot of complexity somewhere else. Can you just offset like all the faces other than the floor and then uh, rejoin it and then just make it look like that I don't know if I know exactly what you, how you're like, imagining it. Yeah, I suppose you could do that, yeah. Include a ground plane, yeah. Yeah, you know, I could just take a line, drag it across all of these, and then find the ones that aren't aligning. I could also just extend these curves and then go through a trimming routine. Yeah, so you're talking about if like you double click in AutoCAD, I don't know if you double click then it'll automatically find like, yeah, it'll guess what you want the cutting objects yeah, to be. Oh, I haven't, I haven't used that. That sounds like a handy one. I don't, I don't, I don't believe Rhino will do that. So that's what I'm just doing right now. This is the extend command. So I selected this as the boundary. And then I'm just, I could just fence select some of these. Yep. And so you can see some of these will need to be trimmed. So I can, you can go through that routine and then you can actually just go through the trim and then clean it up. And then I could also select this. These would be the cutting objects. Also go through trim and then get the, those lines. Um, okay. The only other thing, and I showed you this before, but I'll just review it a bit. Um, is the project command. This is also a curve from objects command. So I'm just going to take this line as an example. Um, there's the other um, tutorial where I brought in Illustrator artwork, basically the text and brought it into Rhino. That would work the same as these curves will. Um, so let's see, I'll go to front and I'm just going to move those up. So it's over that surface. So I want to project it onto that poly surface. So I'm going to go into curve, curve from objects, project. 
So select curves and points to project. So it was that profile that I wanted to project. Enter. Select the surfaces, poly, uh, poly surfaces and meshes to project onto. I'm going to project onto that. Enter. So it's just going to take that in that view and project it straight onto that surface. So this is how text or different pieces of imagery or what have you can start to be included as part of the model itself, as part of the documentation of your thought process, your thinking, whether that's through text or whether that's through imagery or other drawings or what have you. Um, this might be something that is just etched. Maybe it's actually an idea in this case that could be a skylight system or, or something along those lines. I might trim that out or it could be interpreted in a variety of ways. So I want you all to um, work with that as well. Um, <clears throat> to extrude, if I wanted to extrude this, yeah. um, I could just, if it depends if I wanted it to be a solid or just a surface, I could just extrude <coughs> it straight to extrude curve straight. Although it's not closed, if I wanted it to be a solid, I would have to just close that curve up and then extrude it as a solid. So I would do that under solid and then extrude. Wouldn't be a planar curve though. Might almost want to make a surface first and then extrude it. <coughs> so something like this could emerge as part of the tower or something. Of course, we don't need a tower that big. <laughs> so this would have to get trimmed down, but um, you know, it could emerge as something. Other questions? Okay, so take the remainder of this session. Um, start working with some of those tools. Again, um, those are basically the um, 3D rotate, of course the splitting. Um, 3D rotate and the splitting, those are the major ones. And then also um, make sure you have the section tools um, already uh, installed. You can start to work with those and follow those steps in addition to working with unroll, unrolling developable surfaces. Okay? Where did 